गुड इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स गुड इवनिंग सो माय ऑडिबल माय ऑडिबल यस नो साउंड नो साउंड नो साउंड इज देयर नो साउंड नो साउंड ऑडिबल ऑडिबल नाउ यस ऑडिबल लेट मी रिड्यूस माई हैंड सेट नाउ आई थिंक आई एम ऑडिबल एंड विजिबल ओके टूडे आई थिंक जस्ट फ्यू डेज बैक आई रोट ए कॉमेंट आई रोट ए कॉमेंट कॉमेंट वॉज लाइक दिस promotion of person like mohandas karamchand gandhi a man of low intellectuality a lunatic a pathological sex pervert and a man like jawaharlal nehru power hungry greedy sex pervert prevented appearance of good quality persons in bharatian politics which then became a playground of mediocres and ugly ones good ones became rare and uncomfortable in this field i thought for my comment i should give an analysis today is my analysis okay i am going for the analysis okay the okay, case yes today is my analysis today is my analysis yes how with the rise of gandhi abhijit babu namaskar with the gradual rise of gandhi in indian congress the whole congress from the platform the intellectuals the giants the real honest sincere patriots disappear gradually step by step and ultimately the congress became a platform of mediocres very power hungry greedy persons i will give that explanation today and whom the gandhi nehru we call as very great and great intellectuals are basically very much mediocres very low intellectuals i have given you word that i will quote from very record by very respected man domarola it's record on gandhi and also quote from Indian struggle by Netaji Subhash Chandra, and one interview by Bharat Ratno Jamshed Ji Tata. I'll I'll give their, their quotes on these persons. Indian politics, you think, think of the late nineties of the nineteenth century. when the freedom movement started in west of india maharashtra punjab and in bengal think of the intellectuals the giants the very sincere persons like bal gangadhar tilak in the west savarkar savarkar brothers lajpat rai and here in bengal in central india madan mohan malviya and here in bengal bipin chandrapal before their aurobindo nivedita 
and after that Deshbandhu Chitranjan Das, Nitaji Subhas Chandra. You compare their intellectual pain, their academic biodata, their sacrifice to the persons like Gandhi, Nehru, Indira, all these things. Just compare. And if you can compare, you will see in the intellectual pain, Gandhi, Nehru, Indira, all these persons are very lowly placed intellectuals, low, lesser intellectuals compared to the names I have mentioned. I hope you have gone through the writings of Gandhi. I have gone through. That's why I can say there is little in intellectuality. There is no arguments. It's all dogmas, his own ideas. He has not, he is not inclined to learn from history, history of mankind. He is not even interested to learn from the history of our country. He do not believe in the history city of Ramayana Mahabharata. Do not believe. That he just believe they are all stories. Not even interested to learn from the world history. History of movements in different countries of the world. He is not interested. Some ideas pass in his mind and he follows all those things. He has confessed he need not read history. His ideas come from some sparks in his mind. He has told this to Romarola, all these things. He need not learn from history. Volume could come. Please, uh, please use your earphones. But I am loud. Am I? Now is it now if I if I take it from in the in the front of my I will collect a better better set after a few days. I will not be uh, here for another one week. That's why I am doing it today. After one week I hope I will have a better set and it will be audible. Locus, am I audible now? Ojit Babu, am I audible now? Please uh, use your ears, earpieces. Okay. This is Gandhi. He is neither democrat, mentally, nor a high intellectual. Similarly for Jawaharlal Nehru and also for Indira Gandhi. All these things. I am going back. <coughs> Today, and you think the situation which favored the rise of Gandhi in Indian Congress. A vacuum was created, I have told you. A vacuum was created. In 1920, Balmoha Tilak died. Tilak died. Tilakji died. Premature death just after his release from jail in Burma. And Sabarkar was in jail. Shiar Das died a premature, mysterious death, 1925. Lajpat Rai was latitured by British police, died up that from that trauma. In 1928, and then died in 1930, Mutila In this background, in Indian struggle, Shubhas Chandra is writing. The leadership of the Congress has gone to the hands of lesser intellectuals. 
the leadership of the Congress has gone to lesser intellectuals. And in those days, the book was written complete in 1934. It was not easy to be more elaborate at that time. Whom he was targeting? To whom the leadership went? It is Gandhi. And then it is his deputy, Jawaharlal Nehru. Definitely he was targeting them, but it was not easy at that time to mention their names as men of a lesser intellectuality. Because at that time, British was his number one enemy. At that time, it was not good for a mature person, a mature diplomat, mature politician to open up a second war front. A mature warrior, mature leader will fight in one front. In completing that war front, he will go to other war front. A, a mature warrior will not fight war in multiple fronts simultaneously. Naturally, he has to keep the inner front, the home front cool. I'm coming to a note by Romarola on Gandhi. On Gandhi. Yes. You know, Gandhi went to Gandhi went to London for round table conference. That was second round. Table. I think that was second year. That was second round table for 1931. Super memory. 1930 was the first round table conference. Second was in 1931. And he passed there few weeks, I think, possibly few months there in England. And then while he was returning to India, he came through continent, that is mainland Europe, visiting some places. During that place, that, 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 during that time, he visited Romarola in Switzerland. And regarding this visit of Gandhi to UK and continent, Shubhas Chandra made a comment, is written in the Indian style. Better would have been if he passed more days in continent than in England. England he has passed months, but only a few days in Europe. It would have been better if he had been less in the UK, more in the continent. Actually, his presence in the UK, Gandhi's in the UK, has not improved the fate of our Indian struggle, has rather damaged our fate. Rather, had he been in Europe mainland, in different countries, that would have been better to strengthen our freedom movement against the British. But Gandhi was cautious. Gandhi was cautious. Gandhi was not eager to strengthen our Indian freedom movement. Gandhi was not eager to take help from the other countries. Other countries. He wanted to keep the issue, freedom movement, Indian freedom movement issue, as a home front issue of the UK. UK's domestic issue. That was his target. He was never eager to involve any other international power in that field. It was his fear. In December, he was in Switzerland. He met Romarola. There was discussion between them, Romarola and Gandhi, for two days. One Monday, it was, it was naturally winter, December, winter in Switzerland, in Vilnov town, in his house. And you know, Romarola is, Romarola 
as we are reported, Romarol is a French person. He do not like to speak in English. Maybe he knew less English. Any, any discussion in foreign guest, he always needed the help of the interpreter. In this case, usually, as usual, his, daughter, his, his wife and his sister was the interpreter, usually. As usual. And Gandhi said, Gandhi was speaking English. And in this visit, Gandhi's associates were Pyarelal, Mohadev Deshai, and his son Devdash. And, and <coughs> Mirabel, his disciple, her, his disciple, all these persons. And Monday was the day of silence of Gandhi. That's why, that's why he was just a listener. First day, it was Rumarulwa, was the, who talked whole day through the interpreters. Only on next day, Tuesday, it was the day of Gandhi to talk to. And after these two days, Romarola in his diary noted down what he told to Gandhi on Monday and what Gandhi told him on the Tuesday in French language. I do not know the French language. I have come to know this record from the writings of Acharya Shotyan Bosch, the scientist. Shotyanat Boshu Rachana Shangrah, published by Bongiyo Shaitya Purisha. You, re you remember the two friends at that time, also other young scientists of Bengal, like Shotyan Bosch, Meghnath Saha. All those persons were fond of learning not only English, but also German and French, all these languages. Because at that time, Germany, France, Italy, all those countries also was pioneer in science, particularly Germany. They were expert in both Meghnad Sahib and Shutnavosh were expert in German language. Possibly you know the Albert Einstein theory of relativity was originally published in German science language. It was translated to possibly first by the two friends Shottan Bosch and Meghnath Sah into English. And that translation, from that translation, the scientists, English readings, scientists of the British Commonwealth and the English speaking world like North America, Canada, all these things, Australia, they came across the knowledge, wisdom of the theory of relativity by Einstein. This very Einstein, that this very Shotan Bose, when he went to Europe to visit science labs in the mainland, he took the chance of visiting Rumarola. And he saw the notes of Rumarola on Rumarola's own discussion in 1931 with Kobi Guru Mindranath. Elaborate. And also then Mohandas Gandhi and then Subhash Chandra Bush. All these he translated from French language to Bengali. And those are in volumes, these volumes. I have not come across the English language. I don't know the French language. And naturally if to talk to you, I am translating to English today. First day it was Monday. It was a huge, if I read out the whole, whole one, it will take more than one hour. Other angles will not be covered. And vital points I am, I am reading. It was the day of silence of Gandhi. Gandhi was the only silent listener. Romarola 
was talking to Mohandas. Romarola, step by step, was narrating the history of France, its, its wars, its developments, its evolutions, revolutions, all these things, history of French Revolution, and subsequently the pre-war condition, pre-Great War condition of the, of the, of the France, development of capitalism, feudalism, development of industrialists in Europe, and development of many leaders, also development of fascism, all these things he was, he was, he was narrating too. Mohandas Gandhi. And also how in Europe, Europe and in US, the big powers, big powers, are interested only in their personal vested interests. They are not interested in the goodness of the common people. They are creating wars for their own vested interests, capitalist interests. All these things he, dis he told to Gandhi. And also in one place, he is asking whether the Christian nonviolence, the nonviolence doctrine of the Christianity, or the nonviolence doctrine by Gandhi, which will save the humanity? All these questions, also in one place, Romarola is discussing, rather telling, not discussion, telling how in USSR. <coughs> Because it is the year 1931, one decade back, there is already communist revolution and communist powers has come to the Mos power of Moscow. He's discussing what is happening in Russia, what is the different sides, different angles. In his eyes, the Moscow communist revolution, uh, revolution. all this is discussed, uh, all this is told, just uh, totally unilaterally. All these issues, as a whole, as a whole, the pre-Second Great War, Europe situation, the rise of capitalism, industry, its side effects, how the capitalists are not looking to goodness of the common people, how laborers are being exploited, how they are creating violence for their own interests, and also the rise of Nazism, fascism, all these things. Also on the other side, how the USSR is, is working. All this from his high side, he, he told to Gandhi. On the second day, also he, also, not only he has told, uh, Roman Rola, not only he told the doctrine of nonviolence in Christianity, and doctrine of nonviolence in the in Gandhian philosophy. Also, he mentioned in the Anglo-Saxon races and in some in some Slovak countries, there are groups who practice nonviolence. They believe in nonviolence. All these things is narrated. On the second day, on the second day, it was Tuesday. On that day. Romarola told Gandhi, I have <coughs> talked yesterday, whole day, but now today it is your day. You will <coughs> tell, I will just listen. That is the record, what Gandhi told and whatever Romarola has recorded. It is my English translation. Then Sotyan Bosch translated from French to Bengali, and I am from Bengali to English. Okay. Gandhi's started. The big one, it will take a long time. The important lines I am. But Gandhi is telling to Rumarula. You need so much to read from history. You need so much to read from history. So many angles to plan 
to chalk out your ideas. You, you, have to, you read so much. But for my side, for me, I do not try to find out anything, any example from history. But from my side, for me, I do not try to find out any example, any argument from pages of history. I know that means I need not read history. In my mental process, discussion on a history has a little role. In my mental process, discussion of history has little role. All my plans and decisions stand on my personal experiences. In this regard, I am empiricist, you may call me. I know here in this process there is plenty of possibilities of wrongdoings. He is confessing. There is plenty of possibilities of wrongdoings. I have seen many mad people who believe on some things. From there, they cannot be removed. Those are their own experiences. There is little gap between them and those mad ones. Also, there is little gap between me and those mad ones. Even then, for me, there is no other way than to believe on myself. There is no other way. I have to believe on myself. In the past, wise men have experienced spontaneous sparks of ideas in their skies of mind. In the past, wise men have experienced spontaneous sparks of ideas in sky of their mind. They have given us those narratives. They, today, the whole world believe them. They are truth seekers. They are visionaries. History has justified that. I have consoled myself in this way. My words have justification from history. This argument. Now he is telling my words have justification from history. To see how contradictory. Yesterday, I have heard your whole day. I have heard you whole day. Theory of nonviolence may, may, be full, may be fruitful in India. Theory of nonviolence may be fruitful in India, may fail in Europe. But that will not puzzle me. I do not believe that. I have this right to give this theory of nonviolence to Europe. What is happening in USSR is confusing to me. Clear? This person need not read history. It's confusion. He need not take up examples and facts from history. Some ideas spark in his mind. It's confusing. And in some, like in mad men's, their ideas, spontaneous ideas, and those mad men's never be removed from their ideas. He's that man. He's, he's equating himself as a wise man of the past. Rishis of the past. Gandhi's Rishis of the past. He's telling in that way. 
a man of a man media a bag benches his degree only matriculation possibly three times he sat for the exam then passed in third division and barrister it is not the usual barrister on barrister he was just a quack barrister quack in those days any person in england if they act as assistant for few weeks a barrister is in uk and give dinners to few senior barristers they give in a pad a, a, a character certificate and that character certificate they treat in india as barristers and the same thing is about nehru same thing about indira and all the figures of gandhi nehru dynasty has no degree has no degree i about 15 15 20 years back i i i was looking to bbc bbc was was casting on the recorded i think recorded recorded interview of bharat ratno jamshed ji tata the bbc inter interviewer was asking him what is his experience about nehru and gandhi nehru and indira what jamshed ji told they cannot tell they cannot speak they cannot speak on any subject under the sun for more than 5 minutes jamshed ji comment on nehru and indira they cannot speak on any subject under the sun for more than 5 minutes and specifically on indira He, he, to, he told at few times he has gone to indira for meetings and whenever there is a serious discussion whenever whenever the discussion enters into some depth and the time crosses more than 5 minutes indira looks towards the frequently look towards the gate indicating enough is enough now it is your time mr guest get out from my room indira could never talk on a serious subject for more than 5 minutes it's the same about nehru and i have told the intellectual plane plane of gandhi in gandhi writings myself i have never seen nowhere any component of intellectuality everywhere there is a argument argument of a mad person a lunatic person i give you an example his writings on his days in africa you go there see how is our good his behavior to british You see the beginning sentence. He went to South Africa. Then recordings, Indians and Africans were very tortured by the Britishers. All the natives were there. I should work for Indians and also work for the sufferers, Africans there. But again, then. on it angles but but if i do if i work in that way then i am violating the british laws i have gained gun there under the british laws as a british indian citizen i am a law abiding person how can i violate that i must not violate that i cannot violate that if i violate that i will be law breaker how can i be a law breaker suddenly one a triangle turn 
and that is justifying his role as a helper of the British army who are fighting against the freedom fighters of war. Whatever he has done there, some compromise for the Indians working there, some bargaining. Basically, he was a pro-British man there. And that story is projected here in India as a freedom fighter in South Africa. Now, I think I, I'll go to few lines of Indian struggle. Indian struggle, yes. Indian struggle. I will stop how many? Oh, already? 35 minutes. I'm going to do a few lines. Here is in a page 143, Indian struggle. What Subhash Chandra is writing of the Gandhi's rising, how? At the Nagpur Congress in December 1920, M.A. Jinnah, who was still then the nationalist leader, addressed him as Mr. Gandhi. And he was shouted down by thousands of people who insisted that he should address him as Mahatma Gandhi. The ascetism of Gandhi and his simple life, his vegetarian diet, his adherence to truth and his consequent fearlessness all combined to give him a halo of saintliness. This loincloth was reminiscent of a Christ. While his sitting posture at the time of lecturing was reminiscent of Buddha. Gandhi is preparing, presenting himself to the people. And one, one time, in one, one place, he's writing also how in Calcutta Congress, Gandhi's proposal of dominion status and against him the proposal by Subhash Chandra, the proposal of complete independence. It's, it's difficult. He's writing. And before this Gandhi, this, this, this vote, this challenge, Gandhi took in the personal way. Personal way. In fear of being defeated. Because at that time, the youth and the left-wingers and the Congress was for the complete independence. Supporting the resolution of total independence and Gandhi feared his resolution would be defeated. Gandhi took it as a personal issue. And he spread a rumor that if his resolution is defeated, it will leave Congress forever. It will go to jungle. And in fear of losing Gandhi, many persons changed their mind and voted for the resolution of the dominion status. This is, this is how he was always blackmailing, blackmailing. And in one place I am seeing how when the Governor General Reading was negotiating with C.R. Das and Jinnah and also Madan Mohan Malaviya for giving provincial autonomy, how Gandhi sabotaged it. And in this volume, he has narrated how 
the premature death of this bondhu created a vacuum and just after that how the platform of congress was to the hands of some some communalists and less nationalists to the hands of some lesser nationalists lesser intellectuals and communalists and after cr das the communalists dominated the congress platform in one place he is telling he has narrated the death of tilak lajpat rai cr das particularly cr das in this volume is the death of cr das was a very shock to the indian politics had changed the course of indian politics and after that the congress platform there came the domination of the communalists some lesser intellectuals yes you see even at the time of transfer of power it was patel if by democracy to select the prime minister of this trunked in india it was patel not gandhi not 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 nehru and at the beginning of this so called democracy of this country that democracy was crucified we put that in 1938 39 congress's own elected president was compelled to resign and democracy was stabbed there fear democracy is crucified in 1947 even you see if even a non elected person a autocrat gandhi was a autocrat nehru is a autocrat if a autocrat comes to power he creates a situation around him bureaucracy political system police everywhere he is in a position to create a favorable situation then it looks looks democracy but democracy did in the period of nehru was not democracy it was democracy similarly indira was not a elected person he came to power indira was not a democrat the democrat and only intellectuals in the first cabinet of trunketed india shaparsh mukherjee was subsequently was, was forced to resign he actually resigned on his own when he saw nehru was betrayed and then he was eliminated killed in kashmir another person the the our constitution writer that is ambedkar he also resigned and the only two intellectuals of the first cabinet of trunked in india all has to go out in this way the whole congress and the cabinet platform became a platform the mediocres any superior persons could not blossom there any all talents talents became rarity and whatever talents talents has to go to the low profile could not act properly a man like sastri ji was eliminated eliminated in this way in indian so called congress platform government platforms became the platform the mediocres selfish persons who has got undeclared agendas and agenda not to serve the country but to serve their own family interests own party interest party junta interest and for that reason for last you see from 47 for first 
about five to six tickets. Whatever the parties has been born after Congress, all parties are family oriented, dynastic parties. Only recently there is, and, and a situation in India came when talents were fear of coming to, uh, coming to uh, Congress and any politics. Talents were afraid of coming to politics, but talents will not compromise. Talents will speak out the truth. Talents are fearless. Real talents, true patriots will not compromise. They will speak out. But the examples of elimination of giants, intellectuals, real honest patriots, their mysterious killings and deaths, create a fear psychosis in India for many decades, preventing the real patriots, real talents to come in the political platform. And the vacuum is filled up by some scoundrels, lumpens and freebooters. These three adjectives were used by Churchill in the transfer of power, a bill was being discussed in the British Parliament in an independence bill. Churchill word, Premier Atlee, you are handing over power to the scoundrels, lumpens and keyboards. Really, that happened. And only recently, some hope of light is appearing. In some of these states, elect, election time, political killings was rampant. At least in UP, Punjab, Bihar, all these areas, the electoral MP, Jharkhand, election time killings has stopped. They are at least, even the ruling party is being defeated but not killing the opposition candidates. At least electoral killings are not there. Only electoral killings are in Bengal. Also in Kerala that is reduced, but only in Bengal that is continuing. Another good news is coming from East, West. There, the Pakistan force has to face an Afghan force, the Taliban. There will be a turning point for Indian history, history of subcontinent. For that, Mohakal is waiting for 70 years. And we are waiting. In 71, the change of the geographical geography of the south, south of the of Bharat Borsha, 47 one change. 70 on one change, and now this change will be more, more vital. Afghan Pak war, Pakistan will be, some parts of Pakistan will be swallowed by the Taliban forces. And they are waiting for this, the Afghans are waiting for this from 1885. I think, yes, no, they are waiting for, I think, first Afghan war. 1900 something, yes. From then it is, they are waiting for 123 years as per this Afghan-British treaty, Northwest Frontier Province is supposed to go back to Afghanistan in eight, 1985. Pakistan has not done this. They will take away this part. And the result of that, Pakistan will be fragmented. That will lead to a chain reactions in this South Asia, giving way for reorganization of South Asia and birth of new Bharatpursh. Let me stop here, my friends. To pare bolchi. Obijit Babu, British chosen India leadership 
with lesser intellectuals and cheap moral character to implement their political plans. Yes, if you if if you can this lesser intellectual, lesser moral, you can manipulate them. You can use them. Really honest and talented persons. It is difficult to change them, to make them your agent. Atun Bharatiya, Sushant Chatterjee. MKG was a total hypocrisy and bankrupt in thought and personal vision. Yes. Any other? I think volume is okay. I think Lokesh, have you understood? You cannot understand Bengali? Yes. Konkona, I think. The, the explanation is, I think, clear. You may not agree to my arguments, but whatever wrong or right I have told, I think it is clear to you. Let me stop here now. And I will not be with you for coming at least one week. Thank you. Good night.